Hey, what's up guys? Joker here and I hope you're all doing well. Surprise, surprise, today we are going to be talking about the NVIDIA RTX 3000 series, which got its big announcement yesterday. I live streamed uh, the entire event, took some questions for about a half hour before the event, and then we spent about another half hour chilling and hanging out afterwards and kind of talking about what we saw uh, in the chat. It was a really great time if you were there. Uh, thank you to all of you that showed up to that and enjoyed uh, watching along on the stream. Um, but today, yeah, we're going to be talking about, you know, what we saw and also, you know, which one of these 3000 series cards is right for you based on your gaming needs now that we have the full specs, which are nothing short of jaw-dropping. They're just absolutely incredible, so we're going to get fired into all of that in just a moment. Did you just finish building a sweet gaming rig only to have this happen to you? Not to worry, because your CD key has you covered with Windows 10 Pro licenses for under $18. And if you head over there right now, you could save 20% off with my code JPD20 at checkout. You receive your key within seconds, and then just click the start button and type activate to find the Windows activation screen, and all you gotta do then is paste your code in. For more info as well as that coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. So during that live stream event, you know, we were like, there was a lot of shit talking going on um, while Jensen was doing his presentation and all of that, um, because there wasn't a lot of actual like concrete numbers. I mean, there's things thrown around like performance per watt and teraflops and all these sorts of things, but um, they didn't really delve too much just into in the actual live presentation into things like the CUDA core count numbers. Uh, and all of that stuff, you know, we heard about video memory and things along those lines, but um, really, like, one of the biggest tells for performance is uh, CUDA cores, at least in terms of typical rasterization performance. And I don't think that was conveyed at all during the near 40-minute presentation by Jensen uh, in his kitchen with his absolutely epic spatula collection. Jensen, I must commend you on your fine selection of rubber spatulas. We need an RTX spatula t-shirt. Uh, stay tuned, that could be coming to the Joker production shop. Uh, but yeah, the CUDA core accounts were not focused on a lot. And then immediately after the stream was over, I was on the NVIDIA website trying to do the notify me thing and I came across um, the specs of the cards for the first time and this was my reaction in real time. Um, this was not acted out in any way. This was in real time on the stream, my reaction to seeing the specs on these cards. 3090, holy shit, those specs were not accurate that were leaked, whoa, 10,000, whoa, holy shit, whoa, 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 these specs are different than what was leaked, that's for goddamn sure. And still looking at these specs today, I feel that reaction was 100% justified because I have never, we have never seen a generational leap like this from NVIDIA or AMD ever. I can't remember any time in history where there was a PC component, whether CPU, GPU or whatever, that went from one generation to the next and is like literally doubling its performance and costing less. It doesn't even compute. It is straight up science fiction. It does not make sense to me. I still cannot calculate that in my brain how this is actually happening. So we're going to take a look here uh, at the specs and I'm going to kind of talk about, as I said at the start of the video, you know, which one of these cards is going to be right for you based on uh, budget and what you're wanting to do um, and really what is the king of this lineup and I've also got some theories on some other cards we could be seeing obviously we're going to expect to see things like a 3060 um, will probably be coming out but right now uh, at least for, for right now all we have to go on is the 3090, 3080, and the 3070. The 3080 will be launching on September 17th, the 3090 a week later on the 24th, and then the 3070 will be coming out sometime in October, probably a week or two after the RTX 3090. And that is definitely going to be an exciting purchase for a lot of people because looking at the CUDA core count, it's got 5,888 CUDA cores and it is selling for just $500, which is mental because this CUDA core count here, right here basically tells us that you know, and corroborates what Jensen said during the live event is that this card is faster than an RTX 2080 Ti. Bottom line, the RTX 2080 Ti has 4,352 CUDA cores. This has 5,888, and that is one of the best tells when it comes to at just rasterization performance. Um, typically, it scales pretty evenly. Like if a card has 
20% more Cuda Cores than another card, then it's going to run about 20% faster. Um, but there has been some concerns brought up with things like the 3090 having over 10,000 Cuda Cores that we might actually start to see some games that are not scaling um, you know, that well over that many Cuda Cores because we've just we've just never seen it up until this point unless you're running like an SLI configuration or something. Um, still, even, even SLI 2080 Ti's wouldn't have gotten up to 10,496. It would be more like an RTX 3080, which has 8,704, exactly double what is on a 2080 Ti and costing $700, almost half of what the 2080 Ti cost. So these specs are absolutely monstrous. The CUDA core counts on these cards is absolutely insane what NVIDIA is doing here uh, at these price points. And of course, we've also got the RTX 3090, which is meant to be a Titan replacement, uh, although a lot of people are saying it's more like a 3080 Ti, but I don't really agree with that. Um, you know, the price, $1,500, is a few hundred dollars more than what we saw in the 2080 Ti. And, you know, based on the other cards here, there's not a, as big a leap uh, between the 3080 and 3090 in terms of CUDA core counts, um, but the price is more than, is, is, is doubled. It's more than doubled, actually, on the 3090 versus the 3080, but it's only offering roughly 20% more CUDA cores than the 3080. So it's going to be a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people to go out and buy the 3090, even though I would very likely get to get one anyway. Um, I think the 3080 is probably a very, is a very compelling buy. Um, and if I didn't want the best of the best of the best, I would really wouldn't have any shame about having a 3080 in my system. That card is going to be a monster, even uh, for 4K gaming. And I say that as someone who's been gaming on a 2080 Ti for the last two years, and the 3070 now is coming out, basically making it look like the absolute king uh, entry-level 4K card. And I say that in quotes because a 2080 Ti is, you know, it's really been the only 4K card, and now we have this coming out, and it's almost seeming like an entry level at this point because it can run games at 4K ultra settings and getting 60 FPS. And that is the entry level for a $500 card. Like what the fuck just happened in the last 24 hours? The GPU space no longer makes any sense. The 3070 for $500 is a 4K graphics card. And then, you know, if you're gonna, people at this budget though, maybe not gaming at 4K, so you're gonna maybe game it ultra wide, 1440p. If you grab a 3070, for 500 bucks for 1440p, I can't blame you at all. Great price, and this card with these specs for 1440p would probably last you four years. Like a good three to five years, I would have to think 1440p is going to be an, an absolute cakewalk for you to run on this card, unless you get into something like you know, maybe Cyberpunk with ray tracing, everything turned up to the max. You'll probably see some limitations there with that kind of stuff, but rasterization performance, I think a 3070 will last you a good three to five years easily for 1440p gaming ultra wide maybe get a little bit more taxing um the 3080 is going to be an absolute awesome card for um you know the ultra wide you know maxed out specs 4k gaming um really you know no holds barred wanting to use every uh you know every running every game maxed out completely 3080 i think is pretty much going to be able to crush it uh even at 4k i think it's going to be absolutely fantastic and i say that as a, again as someone who's been using a 2080 Ti for two years, and I play pretty much every game maxed out at 4K and get 60 frames per second. There are some games here or there where I do need to tweak some options, and you know, maybe it'll be like one option, like an Assassin's Creed Odyssey, like I'll have to lower the fog down to medium and maybe the shadows down to high, and then I'll get like 80 frames per second by tweaking like a couple of options. That, that kind of stuff... Uh, happens all the time, but you know, we've got new games coming out, new Assassin's Creed Valhalla is coming out, we've got Cyberpunk coming out, which is going to be extremely demanding, especially with ray tracing features, the new Avengers game, which ran like ass uh, in, in the open beta a couple weeks ago, I tried playing that at 4K maxed out, ran completely horrendous, but I'm really chalking that more up to optimization uh, on the developer's part than the, you know, the 2080 TB, T Ti being at fault and not being able to run this game. Um, and then, you know, in this stack here, we've also got the 3090, which NVIDIA is like marketing as the first 8K card, which nobody's going to be using it for 8K, honestly. Um, this is going to be the absolute king 4K card, no questions asked. Um, but there is a definite gap here, you know, and I think that obvious gap is the 3080 Ti, which I do think we will be seeing. I don't think there's any question about it. 3090 is meant to be a replacement for the Titan. That's NVIDIA's own wording. So we should probably still see a 3080 Ti, and typically the Ti's and the Titans are extremely close in terms of CUDA core counts, usually only off by a few hundred at most. 
and the gaming performance on those cards is typically like almost identical, like within two to three percent difference in terms of game performance, but then the TI will have less video memory and as a result be cheaper. So if you're looking at the 3090 right now and you're saying $1,500, I don't want to spend that much, but I want the best. I, I, I think that in the next six months, you'll be if you do wait, you'll be pleasantly pleased as I do think there will be a 3080 Ti that comes out probably around, let's say 10,256 CUDA cores, just pulling that number completely out of my ass and off the top of my head. I think it'll get pretty close to what these specs are right here. Although the memory will very likely be less. I think it'll have 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X. I mean, it's probably going to be the same exact PCB and there's already slots for 12 memory modules on there. So rather than having 12 two gigabyte memory modules, they would do 12 one gigabyte video memory modules. So it would have 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X, slightly fewer CUDA cores, maybe a little bit higher clock speeds out of the box and roughly the same floating point performance and all that other stuff here. And then MSRP, anyone's best guess, but I would say hmm, thousand bucks. I think a thousand bucks would be fair uh, for something like that. And it would definitely probably put a lot of people's minds at ease if they just wanted uh, the best performance, but maybe don't need 24 gigabytes of video memory, which most games, even, even now at 4K, uh, are not really going to leverage. Very few titles would get even anywhere close to that uh, right now. But maybe, you know, we'll see in the next couple of years next-gen consoles coming out and everything, maybe we will start to see that video memory can't get pushed up. But I think the 3080 Ti, if there is one, and I do think there is one, I think it'll come out. I think it's going to have 12 gigs of VRAM, and I think that will be probably the best gaming card to own unless you get up to the 3090, which probably wouldn't make a whole lot of sense at that point, which is probably why they haven't announced the 3080 Ti yet because they want to get um, you know the enthusiast out there to spend money on a 3090 just like they did in previous years where people would go out and spend a ton of money on a titan and then the 3080 ti would then no, not a 3080 but uh something like a 1080 ti would come out a few months later and people were like man i should have just waited i could have got basically the same performance for a few hundred dollars less and i think we're going to probably see that happen again here on the 30 series but i would like to get your guys feedback uh down in the comments below on all of these specs did these absolutely amaze you um, you know, final conclusion on this 3070, I think is going to be a killer card for 1440p and ultra wide and can even handle 4K. 3080 is going to be a monstrous 4K card for years to come. And the 3090 is also going to be an absolute beast, but it's really kind of hard to justify that $1,500 price tag over the 3080 when the CUDA core counts are as close as they are. And I do think that we will at some point see a 3080 Ti. So that's Kind of my final conclusion, at least on the cards that we have available right now to take a look at the specs on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Ciao.